start. Hi friends, it's Rochelle Painbaum, and I am so excited to be sharing with you something super fun. It's Halloween, and so we got trick-or-treaters coming over. So we are doing a breakthrough session today instead of our live show. And as you can see, it's Halloween, and I have a great guest. I'm over here at Julie Loverin's house today because she wants to do a breakthrough session. And I've messaged, I've tell, told you to get on Facebook, message me if you want to do a breakthrough session with the pain whisperer. And so I'm going to kind of show you what, what is a breakthrough session. And we're going to do this with Julie today so you can see what that is for you. You might be thinking about what kind of pain you have, what's keeping you from working out. I'm a physical therapist, so I work with pain. That's, that's what I do. Um, people call me pain in the a lot of times because I'm working with people that are in pain and I'm trying to help you fix your pain. So I want to show you what a breakthrough session is and so we're going to just talk to Julie today. She approached me um, because she had seen what I had, was doing online. I guess I'll just let you tell us that. So you contacted me and how come? Um, because I had seen some of the videos that you posted on Facebook about um, lifting and the proper way to lift and the benefits of it. And I also knew that you were a physical therapist. And I have, <laughs> um, several years ago, I had a cervical fusion. And um, because of that, I have quite a bit of muscle pain and spasming in my neck and shoulders. So I wanted to start weightlifting, but I wanted to do it the right way without causing any further damage or too much pain. Right, muscle spasm. So a neck fusion is generally when you have a plate that's fused your vertebra together. And so you, you did you have, how did that happen? What kind of injury was it? Um, it was a car accident. Okay, you and broke your neck? Yes, I broke my neck. Um, I broke um, my cervical number five. So um, I have a plate that's fused from my C4 to my C6. C6. So yeah, that's a three vertebra fusion. So. Um, so you have worked out yes. before. Yes. What kind of workout did you did you do? Lift weights or anything, or was it cardio, or what kind of workout did you do? Um, basically cardio, just okay. cardio. Like treadmill, bicycle, um, uh, treadmill, um, elliptical, what elliptical, kind of and um, uh, yeah, I would do um, hit training. So I would do a run walk combination. Okay. Um, and then um, some rowing machine, mm -hmm. um, the elliptical, and then riding my bike outside. Okay. So what kind of, so you would go into spasms while you were working out, or was it after out, after that? Um, after I was working out. Okay. So, so and I did try. by the evening or right after? Um, sometimes by the evening, usually the next morning. Oh, the next day. Yeah. yeah. It's really important to know, like, when does the pain start, if you feel it. When you're going, actually, pain is a good thing. Like, pain is what well, your body's been telling you that something's not right or you're not doing something right. So, even though they say no pain, no gain, you got to be really careful with that. But pain is also good to know, you know, how to monitor where you're at if you're doing something too much or if, you know, you're pushing the limits a little too much. So, so you had pain usually the next day. Yes. Was it more than soreness or was it spasms like when you got up out of bed? Um, it was a lot of stiffness, okay. um, unable to move too much, and then um, the muscles getting really tight and spasming. Yeah, okay. Did you have to take any medication for that? Like Lots of ibuprofen. Ibuprofen, yeah, okay. So um, that's another thing when, when um, you want to think about if you are taking ibuprofen before you're working out, that's, that's probably not a good idea because you're masking the pain. You want to know when the pain's starting. So you don't take it before you work out, right? Correct. It's always after. Yes. So that's a good thing because you can take it if you're sore, or if you have a hard time sleeping, if you've done an extra workout, that's normal. Uh, you can put some ice on it or that kind of thing. But so it sounds like um, you've had really more tightness, yes. uh, especially in the next day. So soreness is okay because if you've been working out muscles, you know, you want them to get stronger. So they'll be a little bit sore. And that's okay, but you don't want to be in muscle spasms. That's too much, you know. Okay. So um, I'm just gonna check and see. Um, actually, if you want to turn to sit here, and turn to the side a little bit. Um, turn sideways. There we go. So um, generally, you want to look at her range of motion. 
Um, and as a physical therapist, I can do a, a full assessment and you know I'll make what's called a SOAP note where S stands for the subjective, what they tell me. The O stands for the objective, like the, the visual and measurements that I get. And the A stands for assessment, like what is my assessment of her condition. And then a P, the SOAP, P in the, in the SOAP uh, form is for a plan and what you plan to do, the plan of care to help them overcome, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to fix. So right now, um, you know, she's telling me she's really tight. She's got a long scar right here. Um, so I'm going to assess how tight that scar is and see um, what her tightness is because if she's stiff, you know, the next morning, and she doesn't have the right movement, her muscles can, can spasm. So go ahead and see uh, how far, okay, good. And then come back, does that bother you at all? Um, a little bit, a little bit of tightness. Now touch your ear. So I'm just gonna check the range of motion of her neck and see how much she can move. And have you done weightlifting before at all? No. Okay, just cardio, only cardio? Now I want you to turn all the way. So I'm just checking her range of motion. She's pretty good for having a, a fusion. Um, generally with a fusion, because these vertebrae are fixed, the ones below it and the ones above it will become hypermobile. That means they moved a little too much because this ones aren't, these ones aren't moving at all. So she can get some tightness up here where she's extra mobile and has to stabilize a lot more. Um, but her range is pretty good, so that tells me that she can, you know, move in a comfortable, normal way if she were to do lift weights and exercise. She is very tight, though. These upper trapezius muscles, scalings here, um, are really tight. I can kind of feel like she's got some knots in here. So she would really benefit from some manual, like soft tissue mobilization, um, in addition to stretching when she does her strengthening. So. Um, she's a little bit higher on one side than the other as well, which is fairly normal. Usually your dominant side might be raised a little bit. Um, so I just take a quick assessment. Um, do you have any pain right now? Um, not a lot. Actually, some kind of in my lower A little bit in her low back? back. Yeah. Okay. And that's, you know, something that we'll, we can also address and fix if we're working on a strength training program. So the basic principles of, of fixing something that's wrong, especially in physical therapy, is if something's tight, you stretch what's tight, and then you strengthen what's weak. So you wanna correct any kind of muscle imbalances. So if she's really tight, you wanna make sure she keeps the range of motion, but um, then she's, you know, she's gotta strengthen her upper back to help compensate so her neck doesn't do all the work. And then she can also do some good stretching for helping her posture. The more rounded forward you are, the tighter you are. I mean, gravity pulls us forward just naturally. So we have a tendency to get tight this way and stretched out and weak this way. So for Julia, it would be really a good thing for her to do some strengthening to strengthen her upper back, you know, her middle, her shoulder, shoulder blades, or they're called scapula. They're, her shoulder blades are really responsible for her posture. Besides making sure she's stretched and flexible in her low back and tightened here, and that helps create a better balance. So you're not this, lean, hunching forward, and then you have to lift your head up in order to see straight. So then you get really tight up here, the suboccipital area. So that can cause headaches, you know, muscle tension in the neck. So, um, so does that make sense yes. for you? So what we would wanna do is make sure Stretch here, do some stretching and strengthening here. So in the strength training program that I have, you know, you, you work on your back, chest, you know, biceps, you work all the muscles of the body. So you'd want to watch those videos because they show you what muscles you're moving and strengthening and then also um, doing the stretching. And one thing I can also do um, as a physical therapist, show you how to stretch yourself I could show you how your husband can help do some manual things in there to help make sure you don't get any trigger points in there. So, um, and then the strengthening will help compensate a lot for 
all these tight muscles trying to hold your neck up, you know, so you stretch, strengthen what's weak, and, um, and that will help make a big difference. Now, one thing since we haven't done strength training, you can already turn forward here, um, is um, you haven't done any, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so she would really benefit from me helping doing some um, personal training with her. I, I don't want to call it training, but I would actually go with her and go through my whole program, all of the uh, routines, to make sure she's doing them correctly. Um, so that her head position is correct, you know, some of the overhead exercises, you want to make sure and stabilize the neck so you don't put too much strain on here until she builds up her strength. So, um, does that make sense? Yes. Like, uh, we would just start out um, making sure you're doing everything in the right position and monitoring as well what kind of pain you have while you're doing it. So, something might feel like a little too much stress, you want to still strengthen the muscles so you have to challenge them enough but not overdo it okay. and so anyway like you're a little bit higher on this side right um so you can do a little bit more like you're probably t you feel like tighter on this left side right yeah so, um a lot of the unevenness happened after my cervical fusion okay so. yeah interesting so um so th that's kind of what we do like um you can turn to the side here um have you do you have any you have lower back or leg, any, you haven't had any other surgeries or anything else, right? No. Yeah, okay. So, um, and, and you want to do some cardio as well as the strength training. Yes. You do, yes. right. So, so we would talk about also, you know, some of your time frame goals, like if you want to work out every day or two or three times a week to start, we would also try and figure out, you know, what's a good place to start since you haven't done it any, any you haven't really done it. Right. We can, yeah, get you started with that. So, uh, do you have any questions at all? Um, no, I can't really? think of any. <laughs> yeah. That's the dog right like, like any fears of, you know, strength training? Like, do you go to the, you see the weights? Have you ever tried any kind of? Not um, the free weights. The free weights. Okay. Um, I've tried some of the machines. Yeah, I've tried some of the machines really briefly, but um, okay. again, the next day I hurt a lot, so I've pretty much stayed away from them. Yeah. Um, not really sure if it was the right thing or if I was doing it correctly. Sure. Um, I think um, part of what's important to me is knowing the right kind of stretches and aftercare when I get done. Yeah. After my workout, um, to right. continue not any pain or sure. at least the wrong kind of pain <laughs> right that's true and so if she were to have any kind of muscle spasms I would also you know show her how to make sure and and get those to stop you can do that with some manual techniques and stretching as well um, but and then of course if she has any pain she, she will be sore I know I you will be sore okay but so you, you want to make sure that you're not going too much so that you don't have spasms, but you will be a little bit sore. And so there's techniques you can do. You know, you can use some ice after you're done with the workout, after you've done some good stretches, generally stretch after you've you know, done your workout and warmed up, um, and then get some really good stretching in. You don't, you don't have to um, worry so much about the neck stretching because you're fused, right? So, okay. so it's really the other things like your, your front, yeah you know, pec muscles, you want to make sure those are stretched, and strengthening here, and strengthening your arms and stuff so that you compensate for not all of your neck doing the whole, the whole work, but all the job. So. Okay, that sounds so, great. So yeah, so that's pretty much a breakthrough session. It doesn't take long, pretty much 15 minutes, and so what we could also do is, is um, I could show, she could watch the videos, that's what I would highly recommend where you can see what muscles do what and how they move the body and then that helps you be familiar with what's equipment at the gym as also the machines so i've done breakthrough sessions where i actually go to the gym go through all of the the workout routines so that you're familiar with them and some people you know just go ahead and take off since you haven't done it before you know i can help help walk you through that and um and make sure that you're doing it properly if you have pain how do you fix it how do you stay right in the same pain window that you, you know, you're progressing, but you're not overdoing it and not in pain. Right. right. We're trying to help you not have the pain. Yeah. So, and that takes time too. So, 
So yeah, so that's a breakthrough session. And some of you that might have, you know, shoulder pain, there's a lot of fun techniques that I can share if you've overdone it with some kind of t tendonitis or that kind of thing. Um, there's really great techniques. So you'll have to stay tuned because I have special videos that show you how to fix yourself. So a good physical therapist teaches you how to fix yourself. So if I'm being a good therapist, Julie will be able to do all of the strength training routines um, on her own eventually and be able to self-monitor any kind of pain and know what to do to fix it because that's what's going to give you confidence, right? right? Yes. If you can progress yourself safely, you feel like you're getting pro you're, you are getting stronger and without having the pain and the spasms, if you have something, you can control it and figure out what to do to make sure that they stop and not have them. So. Yeah. And you'll just drink, so that's, that sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Good. So breakthrough session. Um, make sure and message me on Facebook. That's how you can uh, get a hold of me. You can go to ilovetolive.com and sign up for a breakthrough session right there on the landing page. And um, I would love to hear from you, see what we can do to fix any kind of shoulder, neck, elbow, back, hip, knee, ankle, foot, especially any kind of uh, overuse. But surgery, you know, I help people that just barely had a rotator cuff surgery, what to do, how to get started, and um, I'd love to help you do that. So, hope to hear from you soon. Uh, next week, the Barriers and Breakthroughs show will be 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday. So, we like to thank Julie um, for coming today and for sharing her great Halloween decorations because it's Halloween today. Thank you for coming. Yeah. So, look forward to hearing from you. Go uh, have a great Halloween. Be safe out there, and we'll be seeing you next week.